Welcome back to Half the Battle. I'm your host as always, Daniel Levy, your co-host Shaq. And Shaq, uh, UFC 223, it just went down and Khabib is the new lightweight champion of the world. Shout out to Khabib, man, because like we say, when you're dealing with all these opponent switches and all this crazy shit happening the week of the fight, to stay in the fight shows the type of heart he has. And he means what he says. He's down to fight anybody. And that's what he did. And let's be honest here. He whooped Al's ass. Al fought tough, but make no mistake about it. Khabib won every round and won it handedly. And uh, now it's him versus Connor, And let's see what happens now. Yeah, you know, or if they want to make the Tony fight for the sixth time in a row. But, you know, credit to what you're saying about could be willing to fight anyone anytime any place not only that i mean when there's dolly when there's dollies being thrown at your bus window and you're not getting shooken up by that you're still going out there and 50 43 and the guy it just speaks volumes to the kind of competitor and athlete that could be Nurmagomedov is man for sure man and uh when you actually see what happened on the bus man it, it, for some people it could it can be a traumatic experience but you know my boy, he's from the, the the Republic of Dagestan. You know, you know they grew up. This ain't this ain't nothing for them. So he stayed in that fight and he whooped us. But sh shout out to Al, man. He he fought tough and it would have been interesting to see that Al and I came to fight. I wish he would have thrown more because the openings were definitely there. Now I gotta ask you something, man. If uh, you would have thrown that dolly at a bus window, are we talking twenty five to life? We're talking about going away forever, man. But when you when when you're the face of the fight game and you're the champ, champ, I guess you really can do whatever you want. Yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> and it's interesting, man, because Rogan's commentary, look, I much respect to Rogan, you know, he's my boy and shit, but how the hell was he calling Khabib amateurish on the feet? When, you, when, when you're jabbing a man at will, and he's completely defenseless, and his style is boxing, and you're beating him at his own game, how is that amateurish? I just couldn't understand it. Rogan has the tendency to do that from time to time, man, and, you know, he, he was off. He was off this past weekend, and it's not the first time, man, so, you know, we just, that's why when we when we watch tape, we always hit that mute button. You know, when you 50-43 a man <laughs> and win a world title and they call you an amateur, I just, uh, you know, the my friends in Russia are going to have a war with Joe, I'll tell you that much <laughs> right now, Shaq. Exactly. Just like when Artem talked shit, uh, they had a word with him as well. Yeah, and, uh, man... <laughs> You know, Connor got away with murder, bro. <laughs> he, what, he posted 5K bail for that? Yeah, man. They I said mean, 50K, but 50K between you and me, he 10, didn't pay no 50K. Yeah, he paid 10% and, you know, 5K to get out and, you know, his teammate as well. But, hey, if that's all it costs for what he did, he got away with it, man. So now I got to ask you, Khabib versus Connor. You know, obviously, you know, I don't want to be the guy that sits here and says, well, if it hits the mat, Khabib's going to win him and stay standing. Connor's going to win. But honestly, man, do you think uh, – Connor could stop those takedowns of Khabib, man. Man, I, I definitely think, you know, he could in a, a good three to five minute window. You know what I'm saying? I think he could put pressure on him while he's fresh. I mean, because he, at the end of the day, he is super overwhelming. His presence in there, the feints, and I mean, the different looks he gives at you. So, I mean, I definitely think he could catch him out in space. I thought, uh, man, if Max Holloway or Ortega could have got in there, it would have been an interesting fight. Yeah, that would have been a different story. But what I'm trying to get at here is, you know, you get a guy like Ortega down, the fight's not over. But you get Connor down on the ground. And, True. you know, Connor isn't necessarily comfortable off his back. I'll tell you that right but now. But if uh, Connor hits you on the chin. You might not be good either. <laughs> That's true. But Khabib, if he walks through that left hand, that might break Connor in itself. Exactly. So it's a, it's it's really it really is that simple. If Khabib gets him to the ground, it's over. And McGregor can keep it up, it's it's his world. You know, what I wanna know too is you know, is Max Holloway going to work his way back up to, you know, I say work his way back up, but keep the win streak up and go up to fifty five challenge for that belt because man, now that I think about it, based on how the fight went down with Al, Max versus Khabib would have been a serious fight because you know for a fact, you know, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, Al was scared to strike or anything like that, but there were openings in the third and fourth round where Khabib stood up with him and Khabib was jabbing him at will, and you'd think a guy like Max Holloway would have an answer for that. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, Max Holloway, he's got a tough fight on his hands. All he can worry right now is Ortega, Ortega, Ortega. I mean, we just saw how Hanato Moicano looked this past week, and Ortega beat that guy along with everyone else. So he's got to worry about Ortega after. He can definitely make those talks because he is top three pound for pound, in my opinion. And uh, But he's got to worry about my boy T-City. Uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about Hanato Moicano here in a second. But, man, you know what else would be a good matchup? Ortega versus Khabib. Because if Khabib shoots on those, those uh, single legs like he did against <laughs> Al, against a guy like Ortega, that neck could get snatched up. Exactly. But at the end of the day, 
you kind of you have you kind of have to side with Khabib because at the end of the day he had so many different opponent changes just to fight. You know what I'm saying? It's it's one of those moments is like where I can't lose this. You know what I'm saying? A world title fight where it's like that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's a super pressure cooker. Now, real quick, before we talk about this co-main event between uh, Rose Namajunas and Joanna and Jacek, uh, how did how did your bets uh, turn out this weekend, Shaq? Hey man, you know, like I said, like I told you guys last week, if I have to prove myself, I'll prove myself undefeated. You know, Gritzmacher for that win and still Rose Namajunas, and they played out exactly how we said. You know, we said we were going to go 3-0, and but we ended up going 2-0 and because, you know, Kiesa had to, had to back out the fight. You know, but hey, Kiesa, listen, man, go get that money from Conor McGregor. Go get more than you would have got to win this fight against Anthony Pettis. When moments like that happen in life, you have to capitalize. I understand 100% why he didn't fight. Look, during that whole situation, I'm sure everyone that had bets is wondering, man, should I hedge and get out of this? I'm not sure. This is a traumatic experience. But look. Kiesa, I'm glad he didn't fight. The guy had a cut in his uh, in his face, and I mean, and he's lost via cuts exactly. before. Exactly. So we don't we don't want to get in there. I'm glad he didn't fight. Him and Pettis can rebook it at a different date, and uh, there. Trust me, the the result will not uh, be Kiesa. <laughs> so Rose versus Joanna, the rematch. You know, Joanna blamed the first one on a weight cut. She said it was a fluke. You know, she said if it would have went, you know, anyone could win a one round fight, but what happens if it goes the five round distance? Well, guess what, Shaq? It went the five round distance, and uh, all three judges scored the fight 49 46 for Rose. So now I got to know, how did you score the fight? You know, I scored it 48 47, but. For Rose, I thought she won rounds one, two, and five, 100%. I thought we arguably won the third, but, you know, I was nice. I gave that round to Ioana. But one, two, and five, we won clearly. I thought Ioana fought well, but she lost three rounds. I mean, straight up, and arguably four. Like I said, the third round could have won either way. Thank God it went to us. I thought Rose sat in the pocket and just landed the more effective shots. Yeah, Ioana was probably, you know, out-voluming her, but every time Rose landed, Ioana would feel it. When she landed... You know, it was nothing. Hey, you know, shout out to my girl Rose for cashing that plus 125 underdog play. Three units to win 3.75 units. And, you know, the first time I had Joanna and I wasn't afraid to learn from from my mistakes. I realized that it wasn't a fluke, that Rose was simply the better fighter. So this time I did pick Rose. And, you know, a lot of people are, you know, they're showing the fight metric stats as if that's an indication that it was some sort of robbery. And there's a couple of things I got to say about that. Number one, these fight metric stats... uh are uh, kind of a joke because I don't know if you remember that last stage Northcutt fight where he got dropped two or three times and the strike count was like 127 to 16. It's like, what What are you guys counting? Is, is this a sick joke, Shaq? You know, the, these fight metrics people, it, it, it's a joke. I don't know what they're counting, but let's be honest here. Rose won the fight, and Joanna can go on and, you know, go to 125 and, you know, lose that title as well. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, like we said, when long-reigning champions lose that belt, these are the way things... They don't come back and win the belt again. That's, are, that's just how, how it goes. Works, you know what I'm saying? That's so the fight game. Sign up for best five picks. Go ahead and uh, shoot us that email and we'll get you on track. And use that promo code <laughs> MATADOR to save 15% off any package. And real quick, because I want to talk about those leg kicks that Joanna was landing. Now, people are trying to make a big deal about those leg kicks. Oh, Rose's leg was red and this and that. Yeah, when you land 30-plus leg kicks, of course someone's leg is going to be red. But let's talk about the actual leg kicks themselves because it's not like this was a Jose Aldo leg kick. It's not like this was an Edson Barber. Bosa leg kick where it's you know shin bone you know to the thigh that those you know if, if she was landing kicks like that Rose wouldn't be able to walk but the reality here Shaq is that it was foot slaps you know it was hitting with the foot and that's why Rose was able to walk through them and uh, land the harder shots throughout the fight. 100%. Like we said, it's about the more effective shots. Now, in certain situations, which you have to know, that's why we're the best in the game. We know the type of the matchups, where to get the money on. Sometimes you need to, you know, land less strikes and land the more effective strikes. And sometimes you got to outpoint. And uh, thank God we came out on top. Yeah, and uh, all three judges agree. You know, going into the fifth round, I, I actually had a two to two. And, uh, I had a two to two, but we pulled the fifth round out. So listen, so. when when emotions are running high, when there's exactly. money on the line, sometimes you don't know what the actual score is. You know, sometimes you think you're losing a fight. But I had a two two, and uh, you know, Rose sealed the deal with that big takedown yeah. at the end of the round. For sure, man. It, it reminds me because uh, when Rose fought Carolina in Atlanta, I we bet on Carolina. I was for sure that we lost. I was like, man, there's no way we won that, right? <laughs> and you were telling me, nah, man, I think we got it. And we, and we got it, you know what I'm saying? So. Speaking of Carolina, we'll get to her fight in a sec. I think there's a lot of exciting fights 
in that division for Rose Nami Yunus, man. You know, obviously, Andrade, that's a fresh matchup. You can do the Carolina rematch. I, I'm not looking at a Joanna trilogy. I think Joanna needs to take a back step, maybe fight the winner. Of Either, well, I mean, do we want her to take a third L in a row, Shaq? You, you know, if, if we want her to take a third L in a row, you can do Joanna versus Tisha. But I was thinking, look, let's get Joanna back on track. She's given us a lot in this sport. Put her against the winner of Courtney Casey versus Michelle Watterson. You know what I'm saying? Get, get, get that girl back on track. She ain't taking that fight. Those girls aren't on her level, bro. Yeah, but she needs a win. Yeah, but I mean, she has to be in a big fight. Courtney Casey's... Uh, 500 fighter, I think. You're telling me Karate Hottie versus Joanna on free what's, Fox what's wouldn't be a big fight? Karate Hottie's UFC record? I think it's a losing record. Courtney Casey's UFC record, it's probably 500. But what bit. kind of numbers did Karate Hottie <laughs> versus Paige Van Sant do on Fox? <laughs> all right, all right. You know what I'm saying? This is business first, my man. <laughs> so, you know, shout out to my girl Rose cashing that plus 125 as the champion. And look, we said all week that Hanato Moicano versus Calvin Cater, both these guys our top five guys right now. Both these guys would smoke Frankie Edgar, smoke Ricardo Lama, smoke Josh Emmett. And the only thing I was wrong about was that I picked Cater to win, and I thought Cater was the number three guy and Moicano was the number four guy. But it turns out it's the other way around. Moicano is number three and Cater's number four. Cater simply had to take his first UFC L, and man, Moicano came back with a vengeance. The way he ended up all he ended off all his combinations with those kicks. Now people think that Cater doesn't know how to check kicks. I'll tell you right now, Shaq, Cater knows exactly how to check kicks. It's just credit to the way that Moicano was setting up all his combinations with his punches first, ending with the kicks, and uh, he had him guessing all night, and he ate some big shots before he was able to get off his own uh, his own strikes. Yeah, Qatar fought well, man. It was just Moicano is that top three guy, like we told you guys, you know, before the event. Um, Moicano, serious, look, like we said, we picked Calvin, but, you know, it could have went either way, but Moicano proved he is that guy. He's the guy that was on his way to beating Ortega, in my opinion, had he not shot that takedown, but Ortega drowned him like he does everyone else, and Hanato and him will have to get that rematch in one day, but hopefully Moicano can get that uh, Frankie Edgar Cub Swanson winner and, you know, max best season. <laughs> yeah, what I'm thinking is Hanato gets the winner of Cub versus Frankie, and let Cater get the loser of Cub versus Frankie, and uh, we got two max bets on the line for that, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Giving out free bets on this fucking podcast, man. You know what I'm saying? So, Moicano's top three, in my opinion, and I mean, his ranking being number 11 before That's the disgusting. fight was disgusting. This guy beat Jeremy Stevens, guys. Come on. I mean, not only did he beat Jeremy Stevens, you saw the fight he had with Ortega. It was fucking... Back and forth, a war all the way to the end, you know what I'm saying? It was literally a matter of inches mm -hmm. yeah. up until he shot that takedown. And look, not, not to mention that he already shot on him once and got away with it too. Listen, that takedown would have taken down <laughs> anyone else in the yeah. division, but you shoot in on a guy like Brian yeah. T. City Ortega. You know, he might have survived a guillotine against anyone else, but yeah. against Ortega, that squeeze, it's a vice grip. Exactly, man. So, you know, I can't wait to see what uh, Hanato and Calvin Cater do next because they're my thoughts haven't changed. They're both top five guys right now. Then we also had a fight between uh, Zabit Magomed Sharapov and Kyle Botchniak. It won the fight of the night. I mean, these two stood up and banged. You know, I was, I'm going to say until one guy fell, but no one fell. They stood up and banged for three straight rounds. And, you know, for Kyle Botchniak to be a, what, a plus 500 underdog, uh, he bit down on his mouthpiece. He didn't get the memo that he was the biggest underdog on the card. He came to fight. He bit down. Uh, he showed that Boston spirit, that Boston strong style. And, listen, he took his L like a man. And let me ask you something. Is the hype on uh, Zabit Magomed Sharapov a little bit too much right now, or is is it deserved? You know, I mean, look, like I've said on the show multiple times, he's a big move fighter. He's a, uh, I mean, you know, he's got some sharp technical things as well, but, you know, he likes to go for a lot of spins, and off spins, you can get knocked out. So I'm interested to see where he goes from here. Don't get me wrong, I do think he is a top 15 guy, but let's, let's see where he is uh, Let's see where he really is now, you know what I'm saying? Let's see him fight Miles Jury. Let's see him fight uh, the Andre Feelys of the world, you know, these French top 15 guys. So let's see where he really is, and uh, I think it is time to test him. You know, I want to see how he does in there with Anta Elkins, you know what I'm saying? If he, if he uh, See if he can deal with Elkins eating all the shots and pushing a pace on him. You know what's one thing that I like, though, about Zabit Magomed Sharapov? You know, obviously, we all like the flash. We all like the fact that this kid comes out there. He throws big moves. He's super exciting to watch. He tries to do showtime kicks and things like that. 
But what I really like most about Zabit Magomed Sherpov is that not only is he able to do the flashy things, but when it comes down and it's time to grind, he's able to get that body lock takedown. He's able to get you down the mat. He's able to grind out that clock, take your back, and win the decision. So it's not just all flash for them. He can wrestle too. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you know, when you're fighting Boshniak, you know, you're fighting Boshniak. So, like I said, I want to see some uh, step up it to my boy Shaman too. My boy Shaman's no slouch, by the way. Yeah, that's a good point. So, Zabit, I think he is a top 15 guy. I think he should get that ranking next to his name. It's pretty evident that he is a top 15 guy. So, uh, let's see where he, uh, let's see how he moves on from here. Just don't, uh, just don't, don't, don't rush him up too fast. Just now. don't put him I'm in there with Cater yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't put him in there with Hanato or anything crazy like that, I'm telling you, because it'll, <laughs> it'll get, uh, very ugly. And if they want to do, uh, the Russian, uh, versus, uh, Versus Artem Lobov, they can do oh, Zabit yeah. versus Lobov, get him sure. a quick little highlight reel. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, they can do that on the Khabib versus McGregor undercard, you know? Yeah, sounds good to me. So kicking off the main card, and man, you know, shout out to my boy Chris Gritzmacher. Plus 150 underdog against Joe Lozon. Uh, he went out there and... I mean, it went according to plan. The, the deal was just don't get finished in the first round with a, you know, with a sub or... An explosive move because we know Joe Lozon comes out super hard in that first round. And uh, Chris Gritzmacher, he weathered that storm. And not only did he beat Lozon, he beat his ass and finished him. Yeah, that was exactly, you know, how we figured it was going to play out. Like we said, Lozon has been a long, extensive history of taking damage. Like we said, has eaten five strikes a minute over a decade of UFC fights. And, you know, Gritzmacher is known for his good chin cardio. He's a typical lab fighter. Good chin, good cardio, going to move forward. And that's exactly what he did. It did get a little hellacious, and I'm glad Lozon's corner stopped the fight. I really don't want to see Lozon fight again, but I'm sure he will. And uh, and if he does, we will capitalize again. Make no <laughs> yeah, mistake you know, about it. It's unfortunate, but shout out to my boy Chris Gritzmacher for uh, getting the biggest one of his career. Not only the biggest one, a 50K bonus on top of that. Like we said, this guy's had a rough career probably, man. You know, they kicked him off the tough show because they didn't like it style they they uh keep giving him these davi fights and chad skelly fights and it's good to see him get an opponent that he can win against and i want to see him go in there and fight you know another old man maybe a ross pearson a sage or stevie, you know, ray. stevie ray something like that yeah you know i like the fact that well i didn't like seeing joe lozon get both his eyes closed that was kind of hard to watch yeah, but yeah you did <laughs> but, but what i did like was that sprawl that uh chris gritzmacher had in that first round the uppercuts, the elbows, the knees. Like, it was it was like, violent, man. When I was watching that tape on Grits, I was like, Grits ain't bad. Grits is a good fighter. I think he's better than a lot of these guys that uh, fought Joe Lozon. Yeah, I think he'd beat Marcin Hell's ass <laughs> uh, for starters. But look, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he's top 25 or I anything like know, that. Man. But I feel like just physically Certain speaking, matchups. he looks so much better at 55 than he did at 45. It's night and, and day, and, man. And it's unfortunate because he's still talking about the 145 thing, and it's like, it's like Grits, you don't need to go back to 45. 55. Stay, stay at 55, all right? Like, you're way better at 55. And it's interesting because, you know, Sage is a guy that we know has all the physical tools, but his toughness is in question. And we know one thing Grits will do is test your chin. He will test your heart. And he will test your conditioning. A hundred percent. And I feel like, like I said, physically speaking, when you look at the progression of Chris Gritzmacher's career, you look at the Chas Kelly fight to the Davi Ramos fight to the Joe Lozon fight, his physique is just, he's been getting so much better. He's been getting, getting in better shape. He's feeling more confident. I feel like the move to ATT was the right one for him. And for sure, man. You know, he you know grew up in that lab environment now. No discredit to the lab the lab is one of the best gyms but you know some guys need a change and you know now that he's mixing in you know these new techniques at att with his you know his base which is you know a lab fighter which is eating shots good cardio he, we'll see how grits Micah moves on from here yeah and uh shout out again to my boy grits for cashing that plus 150 underdog play we went undefeated 2-0 and for uh 6.75 units you know that we've clean swept four out of the last five events Shaq? only lost one bet in the last what five events We've won four of the last five events, and the only loss was that fluke ankle live fight. Exactly. So, you know, so, uh, go, no ahead and shoot, go ahead and shoot us that email, bestfightpicks at gmail.com. I'm going to get you situated correct. UFC Glendale this weekend, Poye versus Gaethje. Solid, solid action on these fights. And, and it ain't even, the, like, when I tell, when I tell, 
you might play is you don't believe it. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure when I sent out that Grits Mocker play, a couple of people were like, oh. Oh, <laughs> dude, I got phone calls. I got emails. I got people texting me like, Gritz wait, Grits Mocker? I, I got memes sent the, at the, me the like, bum, like, the bum? Like, are you serious right now, Daniel? You're playing Grits Mocker? And then I got emails saying, you know, stuff like, uh, oh, Rose was mentally shook from the bus yeah, incident. Yeah, should yeah. I should I head? Should no, I buy out? No, you I was like, you we should. plan on winning. So stick by it, and guess what? We won. Exactly. Like we said, I told you guys, Gritzmacher's a better fighter than Lozon. I know it's hard to understand. I know it's Joe Lozon, but Gritzmacher's just a better fighter. And uh, that's why that's why you need us. We're going to tell you those good matchups to get the money the money on. We told you before, MMA is a gold mine for betting. I'm already looking at easy matchups for this weekend. I see a couple easy matchups in Atlantic City. Guys, hop on board. The time is now. BestFightPicks.com. Use the promo code Matador to save 15% off any package. And guess what? We're accepting uh, Bitcoin these days, too. Yeah. Bitcoin. We uh, take Bitcoin and we take uh, all other payments as well. And uh, we're the guys that are consistently doing this. We're putting our nuts on the line every week, and we get the job done. When have you seen uh, We're talking about six units of profit over six units of profit in one event that's a lot of that's a lot more than some of these guys have made out in their uh, whole lives i see a lot of guys just losing 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 and if you're tired of losing where are the guys you need look i had a couple of individual shout out to my uh my boy on i had an individual client uh, come in for this past event and i mean did i not do my job undefeated two and oh Gritzmacher, and he was, and I'm pretty sure he was uh, doubting my Gritzmacher play. He was a little worried, and you know, you know, that turned out to be an hellacious uh, ass open. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. So, man, as far as these prelims went, Carolina and Felice Herrick, look, I had an issue with that being a split decision. I thought that Carolina won every single round of that fight. I thought she looked much better in the Felice Herrick fight than she did in the uh, Jody Escabel fight. And honestly, man, I wouldn't hate a rematch between her and Rose Namajunas. I thought she definitely looked better than the Escobar fight, 100%. I thought Felice fought well, too. I added two rounds to one. But that was another fight where I felt like Rogan was being completely biased. Now, don't get me wrong. I thought Carolina won two rounds to one, like I just said. But I thought it was a good fight. Like, I thought towards the end of the second round, Felice landed, like, three overhand rights in a row that Rogan did not even mention one of them. And, you know, but it is what it is. Thank God I didn't uh, bet on Felice. I thought she fought tough. I do think she's a top 10 chick, but Carolina's a top 3, 4, 5 chick. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a little difference on the frequencies they're operating at. And, uh, you know, Carolina lost two fights in a row, so I I'm not sure if she gets the next title shot, even though she does have that history with uh, uh, Rose Naminas. But maybe a fight with Tisha or, you know, some uh, somebody else. Where you want to see Andrade and Carolina? Yeah. No, I want to see Andrade versus Rose. Okay, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like that, too. So, Olivier Aubin Mercy versus Evan Dunham. You said OEM's going to come out here and have his coming out party. And look, it's one thing to beat a top 15 guy like Evan Dunham. It's another thing to stop him up in under a minute. And I got to say this, Shaq, quick little, uh, quick little fact for all the fans out there. After Benil Dariush and Evan Dunham had that incredible war, both of them got stopped in under a minute in their, in their next fights. Yeah, man. It's a fight fight game. game. Damage. When you take all this uh, damage throughout your fight career, you know, every once in a while, it's just it's too much. And I guess Dunham finally hit that point. You know what I'm saying? It's sad, but Neil finally hit that point. And it's the fight game. And, uh, you know, OAM, like I said, I, I did feel like he was going to have his coming out party. I thought it was going to come against Gilbert Burns. Unfortunately, it didn't. But uh, OAM, serious, man. I felt like this guy had top 15 potential. Ever ever since I saw him fight Drew Dober, I was convinced, okay, this guy might be, uh, you know, improving at a fast rate. And, I mean, he is. And I want to see him fight uh, Felder or a, a Showtime. Uh, or a, uh, <laughs> you, know? you know Showtime won't take that fight. I want to see him fight Showtime. OAM versus Showtime. You know, and uh, what about that kid, Alex Hernandez? See, I, I want him for Felder. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So, uh, you know, either one of those fights, but OEM's a top 15 guy, and it'd be interesting because, uh, you know, his teammate got knocked out by James Vick. You know, it'd be interesting to see if he wants to get the uh, revenge. <laughs> now, is this the end of the road for Evan Dunham, or you think he's gonna be, he's gonna be able to bounce back? <sighs> What is how old is he now? 34, 30, yeah, 34 yeah. 35. Unfortunately, I think this is the beginning of the end. You know, too many wars. Think about all the wars he's been in. They add up after a while. Now he's getting stopped to the body. It's just these, you know, with, you know how these things tend to work. Yeah, it's all a the, all sad the sharks, reality of the fight game, especially the with shark, that fighting style. All the sharks coming up at lightweight these days, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, and I see why he turned down the Vic fight multiple times. Yeah. Now, uh, Ashley Evan Smith versus Beck Rollins. We don't got to talk too much about that. Oh, I mean, Ashley, Ashley took care of business. Ashley and I, shout out to everyone that paid, 
uh, played Ashley Evan Smith because you because you know I I wanted the line to be a little lower for my personal liking. I was willing to go low as like minus one sixty or something like that. But you know, so a lot of people are reaching out minus two thirty, and I was a little scared, but it was a solid spot because Beck Rawlings finds a way to lose every fight. Yeah, and that's just uh, <laughs> that's just that. That's just the truth, <laughs> and that's just facts. Yeah. So you know, thank you guys for checking out this quick little recap. As you know, fear not, we will be back later this week to break down the entire UFC Glendale card start to finish just like we always do and uh look if you want the long-term winning results you know who to call you know you see these guys these flashes in the pants they have that one event where they hit 17 units and they think they're the best ever then they lose 36 units the next event it's like that's not betting man when you're putting 11 units on multiple <laughs> these fake 10 11 like, units that's, like, that's not real on, betting guys. but when you look over the long run which as you guys know this is a long-term game no one does it better than Dan and Shaq long term. Look at just go to Bet MMA Tips, type in best fight picks, and let me know what the fuck is up. And also go to Capertech, check out at TSM Genius for Shaq. Check out best fight picks uh, for for me as well on Capertech. All my shit's been third party tracked this whole time, and long term, no one does it better. So. uh Shaq, uh, you got any words for the fans before we talk later this week for UFC Glendale? Thanks to all my fans. Message me if you're ever interested in starting. If you want to start winning, look in the mirror right now. If you want some extra money in your pocket right now, if you just had a bad couple events, I'm the guy to call. I'm the guy that's going to get you in shape. I'm the guy that's going to get that bookie uh, not wanting to take your bets anymore. So uh, go ahead and shoot us that email at bestfightpicks at gmail.com. 15% off, off every package with the code MATADOR. Over the long run, you know who gets the job done. So thank you guys so much for checking out this very special edition of Half the Battle. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Best Fight Picks. Follow Shaq at MMA Genius 05. Subscribe to Half the Battle on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Hook up those five-star reviews on iTunes. And you know, if you take a screenshot of that, of that five-star review... Hook you up with that free bet. Make sure you use the promo code MATADOR to save 15% off any package at bestfightpicks.com. We'll be back later this week. So until the next time, let's cash these bets.